course, this weekend is uh, some of the weekend. It's the it's the weekend that some people are excited about. Some are not excited about because it's daylight savings weekend. Of course, it's spring or close to spring, so we're springing forward. We're not falling back. We're springing forward. We lose an hour of sleep, um, and there's a lot of conversation about why we do this. Should we do it? We've got Dr. Farah with us today. She's a medical expert, cardiologist, and has been studying all of the impacts of daylight savings time and so we're glad to have dr farah with us welcome doctor to the program so tell us um we've got daylight savings how excited are you do you like are you someone who like like throws a party at 2 a.m on uh, sunday morning like do you gather kind of like new year's eve but but it's like a daylight savings thing that you get your family together or no <laughs> no i'm afraid i'm not one of those people <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about uh, the current state of where things are at. I know here in Washington, a lot of people have been trying to get this changed, and people have been trying to change this around the country. Where, where are you at on this? Um, you know, I, I, I agree to some degree about, um, you know, how daylight saving time can impact our health, particularly when it comes to heart health, because we know that sleep uh, is one of the risk factors, one of the major risk factors for cardiovascular diseases that's been added uh, uh, last year by American Heart Association. And for good reasons, because uh, for those who have sleep disorder and for not getting adequate sleep, you uh, can get cardiovascular disease and uh, it accelerates your risk of having things like heart attack and stroke. And so uh, for those who are very sensitive to time changes and changes to their circadian rhythm, it can totally throw them off and they really suffer for some time until they can get back into that, their rhythm. And it can have a detrimental effect in their overall health. Mm. And how, do, how does daylight saving time impact health? Um, you know, uh, as I was saying, like with lack of sleep, it really comes down to sleep disturbance. Uh, it can increase inflammation in their body and the stress factor and everything together, it can exacerbate the risk factors like high blood pressure. For those who have high blood pressure, they can have higher blood pressure. Heart rate can go up and uh, can, as a result, worsen their cardiovascular risk, uh, risk of having heart attack and stroke. Um, fatigue can go up, uh, you know, just being tired. Um, so a number of, number of ways it can affect someone. Yeah. Now, isn't it depending on maybe what part of the country you're in change how you're impacted by this? I mean, you're in Texas, right? So how this impacts you is different than how it, this impacts us up here in the great north. So it, it's got to be different in, where, in what part of the country or world you're in, no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in areas where... It gets dark, and you know, early on, it, it impacts them a lot, uh, especially during fall, uh, fall back. Um, it gets darker even sooner. Seattle, I think, is one of them. Um, during winter months, you know, people can get really depressed because they're getting less exposure to sunlight. And then, uh, especially people like, you know, I'm going to choose healthcare industry as an example. For most physicians and nurses, they have odd hours. Like a lot of them, they go to the hospital really early on, and they get out of the hospital really late. And with time change, sometimes these folks don't get to see sunlight at all during the entire winter month. And I think uh, that that time change only worsens this, and a lot of people get super depressed. And depression can have an impact on your overall health as well uh, on all aspects, including your heart, heart health. Yeah, wow. That's really just important information to have. And, and as we spring forward, what are some of the concerns we should watch out for? I know some people say, oh, you're going you're, you're gonna to see some drowsy driving because of people lost an hour of sleep. Is that true? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, if you're not getting adequate sleep, which we consider should be minimum of six to eight hours a night, then your wakefulness, your alertness, like goes your, your, your attentiveness goes down and so you're just not able to focus very well and it can have detrimental impact like just as something as simple as driving for example the rate of car accident can go up 
um, not to mention like you know be not being able to focus on your work at your work and uh, the impact it can have like fatigue uh, you know we are really battling chronic fatigue in a lot of our population part of the reason is sleep, dis- sleep disturbance uh, sleep disorder is pretty high the rate of that in our country right now and uh, the daylight saving time doesn't really help for those who are very sensitive mm. yeah this that's a uh... Man, it's so good to know that. I mean, now you've you've set up some tips for folks um, to help their body adjust with this daylight savings time. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So what I've been uh, recommending uh, to a lot of people is that it really comes down to the circadian rhythm. That's what sets the stage for our sleep pattern and how rested we're going to be. And can you, can you before you dive there, into that, explain? For those of us who are not as smart, the, the circadian rhythm that you're talking about. Yes, the circadian rhythm is like an automatic alarm system, so to speak, within our body. And it sets the stage for when we're going to be sleeping, uh, how long, how restful sleep we're going to be getting, and when we're going to be waking up. And to give you a better example, like, for example, when you travel, especially if you travel to an international place, you can't fall asleep, right? You have jet lag. So the same thing. It's uh, it's as a result of your circadian rhythm getting messed up. Um, And uh, that similar thing can happen with time change. And so you want to gradually uh, introduce that time change into your routine so that your circadian rhythm is not disrupted. Uh, So what I mean by that, you know, it's a one-hour change usually in the fall and again in the spring. So like a couple of weeks or two weeks before, start going to sleep either 10 to 15 minutes early or late, depending on what time of the, you know, whether it's spring forward or uh, fall back. That way, by the time that one hour change happens, it's not like a whole hour that your body's uh, facing. It's really down to like 10 to 15 minutes. And by that time, your circadian rhythm is totally used to it. So you're not going to have a huge impact uh, as a result of that change. Mm, Okay. Now, now dive into these, these tips, these four things that, that we can do. Well, yes. Uh, so sleep hygiene is very important. So um, the number one thing is going to bed on time, uh, set, a, set a time, and try not to deviate too much from that time. When you're going to bed, minimize your screen time. You really should not be on your phone after you go to bed because that white light can really uh, mess with your sleep and it, it, it can make you alert so you're not going to be able to fall asleep as fast. I try not to do any kind of work from your bedroom. Bedroom should really be a restful place. A lot of times it helps to re- do some relaxation before you go to bed, uh, like taking a warm shower, just listening to some soothing music right before you go to bed. All of those are tips for sleep hygiene that can really help you uh, maintain uh, good, adequate sleep and restful sleep. Mm. That's good. I know Pedro. Pedro had a... Here's the thing, because Pedro next week is probably going to be a little grumpy. Okay, we're all kind of on edge right now. He's going to lose an hour, so we're like, oh man, Pedro's going to be grumpy next week. What, Pedro? What are some things? And and maybe, uh, doctor, you can encourage Pedro with that losing that hour of sleep. What what can Pedro do um, to help him not be grumpy next week? <laughs> Well, um, maybe uh, you should try going to sleep a little bit earlier every day, like in 20 minutes increments, like 15 to 20 minutes increments. So by the time that that change comes, uh, you're going to be all set. Your circadian rhythm is going to be fine, and you're not going to lose any sleep. So uh, you're not going to be grumpy. I'm going to try. I'm going to try that. But also, may I ask you, doctor, could it be possible maybe to get rid of the host of the show <laughs> as a way for me to be happier in life? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my goodness! And and see, when I'm gone next week, people are gonna be like, "What happened?" So instead of the sun setting at two thirty p.m., it's gonna set at I think about six. So that's a that's good. That and it also is on our way to those. You know, days where it's like nine thirty, ten o'clock. It's still kind of light outside in June. Those are always uh, good days. I like those days. But it also means darker in the morning again. Isn't, isn't that right? Uh, I think that's how it works. 
Is that? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. So it's going to get a little darker in the morning, and it's going to be a little lighter in the evening. Pedro, what do you prefer? Do you prefer dark in the morning and then lighter in the evening, or do you prefer lighter in the morning or a little and then a little darker in the evening? Oh, I like uh, when we have long, long evenings and it's like late. Mm -hmm. 10 p.m. is still light outside. I love that. You like that? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you don't have any problem, you know, being dark in the morning? No, no, I don't. I yeah. don't at all. No. No, but my concern, doctor, and I got to ask you this question. Um, what about food? Because people don't take that into consideration. I mean, you know, change the habits of food. Like some people, you know, we're used to eating at a certain time. Now that we're going to be an hour earlier, you know, you start feeling hungry before. So what do you do to, to cope with that? Yeah, um, you know, eating healthy, uh, snacking on healthy foods, like, you know, instead of choosing a bag of chips, choose some carrot sticks and celery sticks. Um, that would be, that would be the way to go. Yes. Oh, okay. That's boring, doctor. I'm sorry. I'm not going to have celery sticks. Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen Tim, Tim, the host of the show eating? People still eat celery? <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, okay. is there one like food? There's, if there's exactly, one food that exactly. has no taste to it, like celery has got to be in the top five. Yeah, but right? the doctor has a good point. Broccoli is <laughs> a great food. Gr I broccoli. like broccoli. Yeah. I love broccoli. Yeah. Put a little olive oil. You broccoli. You could do cauliflower, carrots, um, you know, peppers, bell peppers. They're very flavorful without needing to add anything else. Uh, all the different colorful ones, they usually have a little bit of different taste, like the red ones and the green ones. They're super healthy. Um, so that would be my recommendation okay that's good that's good now before we let you go here we got to getting your your body clock back on track i know you you shared a little bit about you know changing the sleep habit is there anything else that could be done um you know it really comes down to maintaining a healthy uh lifestyle and i want people to be mindful of not letting go of their healthy habits as a result of the change that takes place and it throws all of us off from our schedule a little bit at the beginning and by healthy habits, uh, habits I mean exercise for example a lot of us get stressed out because of that adjustment that we're having to make with work and everything for that one hour lost especially during spring we tend to exercise is like the first one to go we, we're like oh we'll do it tomorrow and then uh, tomorrow never comes so just fa don't fall into that trap Continue with your healthy habits, exercising, eating healthy, and of course, following all the uh, all the advice to make sure your sleep doesn't get disrupted. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Now, and last question: What is happening at, at the national level? What What's the current conversation that's going on when it comes to this? Can you Can you give us an update? Yeah, it still has not changed, as you know, but there's a lot of talk. Um, we are getting some promising, uh, you know, uh, encouragement that maybe we'll see it change. There's a national push towards it. A lot of people are wanting it just just to go away. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's artificial. It disrupts a lot of things. So we'll see. We'll, only time will tell. Mm. And what's your what's your vote? What are you voting for? <laughs> Um, you know, for me, uh, just like everybody else, I'm not a big fan of change, especially if that change means disrupting my work schedule and life schedule. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie, I agree with Pedro that I do enjoy the long daytime during during summertime. That's one of my favorite things about summer. So it's, it really is a give and take thing. You know, there are some pros and some cons. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. Very, very helpful. Dr. Farah, how are you, again, how are you going to uh, celebrate this weekend? Good question. Um, I'm going to try not to work this weekend. That's going to be my celebration. All right. <laughs> Dr. Farah has been with us, medical expert, cardiologist who is an expert in daylight savings times, which is happening this weekend. We appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, as always.